For months now, people have been asking me to do a video about Nicole Arbor, the right-wing comedian who hasn't been relevant since 2015. I'll be honest, I really didn't understand why until I sat down and actually looked at some of her newer content and... What's the word racist is just getting thrown around like confetti at an EDM concert. Why are we near the front? <coughs> it's in my mouth. It's like the bitches on Twitter with their hashtag me too stories because a guy looked at them. He's staring because your dress is tucked in your underwear. That's why we're all staring. Oh. I'm not going to do a specific content warning for this video. I'm just going to warn you up front that there's going to be a lot, a lot of shitty, thoughtless, discriminatory jokes bordering on just complete hate speech in this video. Something I think you ought to think about if you choose to watch this anyway is whether or not anything she's doing is worth getting offended about. Whether her limp, joyless, ugly attempts at stochastic terrorism, lazily disguised as satire, deserve any kind of reaction but abject boredom. Arbor is the worst kind of media personality, the person who figures out that controversy can be a lucrative substitute for effort. She doesn't make things to express herself, she doesn't make things to entertain people, she makes things to draw as much attention as she possibly can directly onto her and all of the outrageous things she says and does. And then she can monetize it later. If she believes in anything, like for real, she certainly doesn't show it in her videos. Inevitably, that means she drifts into the conservative griftosphere. Because here on the left griftosphere, people get mad at you if you say something cruel. But on the right, they like it, so it's a lot easier to monetize outrage over there. She can take all the outrage she gets over the things she did to deliberately make people mad, play the victim, and act like all the money and attention she gets is somehow her being cancelled. Case in point, if you're familiar with Nicole, you probably found out about her because of her video, Dear Fat People. Now, I can't really speak objectively to this as a fatty, a fatty, and a boombalatty, but it certainly feels like Arbor's video is just bullying fat people. But let's be fair and hear her out and see if her arguments bear any weight. Fat shaming is not a thing. Fat people made that up. That's the race card with no race. Yeah, but I couldn't fit into a store. That's discrimination. Uh, no, that means you're too fat and you should stop eating. Everybody just- Oh. Oh my god. So, okay, so Nicole's argument boils down to essentially two things. One, you should actually fat shame people to encourage them to lose weight. Fat shaming. Who came up with that? That's fucking brilliant. Yes, shame people who have bad habits until they fucking stop. Fat shaming. If we offend you so much that you lose weight, lose, lose weight, I'm okay with that. And two, fat people are gross. And they complain, and they smell like sausages, and I don't even think they ate sausages. That's just their aroma. They were so fat that they're that standing sweat fat. Crisco was coming out of their pores like a fucking Play-Doh fun factory. And for someone who frames themselves as a big, bold speaker of truth to power, what's really interesting to me is how much of this video seems like it's designed to ward off criticism. Like, she spends a lot of time throwing in little caveats and acting like she's just trying to be compassionate and tell you a hard truth. The truth is, I will actually love you no matter what, but I really, really hope this bomb of truth exploding into your face will act as shrapnel that seeps into your soul, makes you want to be healthier so that we can enjoy you as human beings longer on this planet. <laughs> oh, this isn't for people who are just a little chubby, it's for morbidly obese people. I'm not talking about people who have a little bit of cushion for the pushing. And if there's people watching this with a specific health condition, this is not aimed at you. I'm talking about the 35% of North Americans who are obese. And also she turned off visibility for likes and dislikes and turned off comments. Now, on a certain level, I get it. If you're a woman who makes a controversial video on the internet, you're going to get a lot of disgusting harassment. So normally I wouldn't take issue with her turning that off, but also, if you're going to frame your argument around people needing to hear hard truths and how your hurt feelings don't matter, it's a little hypocritical to go out of your way to avoid getting feedback. It's pretty cowardly to frame her argument as though she's just so compassionate that she's trying to help people in a way that everyone else is afraid to do, only to then complain that a fat person's fat touched her on an airplane. And Jabba the Sun sits right beside me. I just lost my shit. His fat was on my lap. It was actually on my lap. I took the handle. Like it's so self-evidently disgusting and an affront to her that a part of someone else's body accidentally touched hers. Which is it, Nicole? Should people lose weight because because being overweight is bad for them or because it grosses you out. If it's the former, your personal disgust is irrelevant. Also, like, really mean-spirited. 
If it's the latter, that sounds like a you problem, not a them problem. But even if we accept the premise that overweight people should be coerced into losing weight, which incidentally, I do not, that's kind of a fucked up idea actually, Nicole's argument is still dead ass wrong. Most data suggests that fat shaming actually leads people to gain weight. It's not just that it doesn't work, it's that it also does the exact opposite of the thing she said it would do, which was already a pretty terrible justification for being an asshole like that. Google does fat shaming work and see for yourself. Like every study is agreed on this. No. It doesn't. In fact, it's almost impressive how much she seems to miss the point. How many things she says which are not merely shitty, but also deeply, deeply ignorant of the most surface level talking points of fat and disabled activists. Like when she complains that a flight attendant asks her to move seats to accommodate a disabled passenger, and then the passenger is just fat. And also, the story is a little confusing because, like, she's seated next to them, so did she move or not? I don't really get it. But anyway, some disabilities are invisible, and a lot of disabilities aren't something you notice from a glance across an airplane. That guy could have been disabled in a lot of different ways that would have been unrelated to his weight. But Nicole just sees a fat guy, hears the word disabled, and then her little pea brain goes, yeah, it's probably he's disabled because he's fat. Or when she says, are you gonna tell the doctor that they're being mean and fat shaming you when they say you have fucking heart disease? No, a doctor isn't being mean to diagnose someone with heart disease. Also, not all fat people get heart disease and some thin people get heart disease too. You fucking dope. But there is a well-documented trend of doctors not taking the health concerns of fat people seriously, leading to health complications for them. It isn't simply that their feelings are being hurt, though I pause to note, that would still be a problem. It's a problem when people's feelings get hurt. That's not a good thing. Their quality of care suffers as a result, making them more likely to die. Not because they're fat, but because their doctor makes a judgment on them based on the fact that they are fat. Doctors are more likely to overlook and undertreat chronic illnesses. Doctors are likely to simply advise that they lose weight rather than investigating and treating underlying conditions. This problem is compounded by the type of stigmatization that Nicole herself is engaging in here, which makes fat people ashamed and afraid to seek treatment for such health problems. Or when she advises fat people to simply eat less, which as any nutritionist or dietitian can tell you, is just about the worst advice you can give. What might actually lead to weight loss isn't eating less, it's eating more calorie light foods, which are expensive, less shelf stable than the alternatives, and take more effort to prepare. And that's if you even live somewhere where that food is available and not in a food desert as many people do. In other words, having access to the type of foods that are conducive to weight loss and the time to prepare them is a privilege that is only afforded to some people. It's a lot cheaper and easier to eat Kraft Dinner than prepare a fresh garden salad every night. And Kraft Dinner has the added benefit of having all sorts of shit that you've evolved over millennia to crave and eat as much as you can, even if that isn't really helpful in the modern age. Also, like, there's the not-so-subtle effect of addictive additives like sugar, salt, and caffeine and pretty much all caloric dense food, which makes them difficult to just stop eating. I can afford arugula for my fancy salads. Not everyone can, and many would prefer the KD anyway, and that's none of your fucking business. But even if you have the money, time, and willpower to eat well, jury's still out on whether or not that'd make a difference long term. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that people naturally return to a baseline weight. That willpower isn't necessarily a muscle that can be built, but a resource that can be exhausted. Just about the only thing which shows any potential to help people lose weight and keep it off long term are simple lifestyle changes which are easy to maintain, and eating less is the exact opposite of that. Because human bodies get hungry. Not to mention, you know, Kind of sounds like you're advocating people getting an eating disorder, Nicole. This is, it's nothing, it's just an excuse to make cheap shot jokes at the expense of people's appearance, which you should learn in grade school is a shitty thing to do. But I mean, people already said all that shit when this video was new. That was like six years ago. I just felt like you can't really talk about her without at least addressing her biggest accomplishment to date, which was of course being a shithead to fat people. I really don't know what she does anymore, but she has settled into a niche, and that's the conservative comedy club. Conservative comedy works a little differently than the regular kind. In regular comedy, your goal is to make your audience laugh, while in conservative comedy, the goal is to state your beliefs out loud with the cadence of a joke, but you don't actually write a joke. 
Take this video, for example. The Woke Awards, a satire of the Oscars or some shit. I don't know. It's unclear what she is actually criticizing in the video. Comedic without punchlines. Action film with no violence. Period piece with all the stuff we don't like taken out of history. She complains about comedy without punchlines, even though this whole video is just her saying woke words. And the award for best, but not better than anyone else. Cisgender, non-binary, gender fluid. Apolitical, completely apolitical. Non-religious. Non what, what is the joke here? What is the punchline here? That everybody wins the Oscars? That doesn't happen at the Oscars, Nicole. It doesn't happen at any award show. What the fuck are you talking about? Are you afraid of that? That someday they might not announce winners at the Oscars, but just ask all of the movies to share the award? That this is the world the wokes want, one where you can't win an Oscar? What the fuck are you complaining about? She talks about inclusion like it's a bad thing. Totally inclusive. We love inclusion. Do you all feel included? Is the joke that like we shouldn't make people feel included? Like, isn't it good if people feel included? Isn't that a, like, is that, why is that bad? You're just saying it's bad without telling us why. What or who is she even criticizing here? Because it feels to me like she just took conservative gripes and divorced them from all meaning or context. Like, I get that she doesn't like woke stuff. I get that she feels like award shows are being too woke. Beyond that, I have no clue what she's trying to say. Like, she has an explicit call to action in this video. We could have prevented this. None of this had to happen. Everybody wins. We're all idiots. This could have been prevented. We should have pushed back while we could. Prevented what? What is the thing you were afraid of that's gonna happen? Like, forget comedy for a second. Just in terms of coherence, what the fuck are you even talking about? Did someone just dump a bunch of Free Republic posts into an algorithm? Have I been tricked by a bot? Now here's, here's a fun one. You want a fun one? Here's a fun one. It's called Race War 2021. And I bet you're pretty excited for this one. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait to hear the racial comedy stylings of this incredibly white woman. The premise of this skit is that Nicole is at a race where everyone participating is a different race. You see it's clever wordplay there because the word race can have two meanings. Nicole is an announcer providing color commentary. And that color commentary joke is cleverer than anything in the video. In lane two, we've got a Chinese man. Oh, he gets those Wuhan points. The virus did in fact come from China, right? And wrecked the entire world. Okay, yeah, it did. The Chinese guy gets those Wuhan points, you know, how right now people are universally heaping praise and respect onto Asian people because of the coronavirus. This guy being Chinese gives him the advantage because people think so unfairly favorably upon the Wuhan province of China right now. Yeah, that sure, okay. Completely in touch with reality there, Nicole. Cutting edge stuff. And, and, and she confirms with the booth that the virus did come from China and wreck the whole world. And yet people still have the unmitigated gall to not think poorly of some random Chinese man in a race. When will it be enough for you bloodthirsty wokes? That's definitely what's happening in the world right now. Oh, by the way, here's a quote from a study conducted by California State University's Center for Hate and Extremism. Anti-Asian hate crime reported to police in 16 of America's largest cities and counties rose 164% from 36 to 95 in the first quarter of 2021 in comparison to the first quarter of 2020. This year's first quarter increase follows a historic surge in anti-Asian hate crime that started last year in 2020. Anti-Asian hate crime increased 146% across 26 of America's largest jurisdictions that comprise over 10% of the nation's population, according to a newly updated analysis of official preliminary police data by CSAG. So, hey, Nicole, probably what you probably wouldn't want to do in a situation like that, Nicole, is point at the group of people being targeted for a historic surge in hate crimes and say, boy, look how everyone is just letting those guys get away with this. We ought to do something, by gum. Because do you see, Nicole, do you see how that kind of encourages people to commit hate crimes, Nicole? And in case you think I'm exaggerating how much she thinks just random Chinese individuals should bear the responsibility for the coronavirus, stay tuned, because we'll get to more of that later. Anyway, she says more boring shit in an attempt to offend someone, anyone. How nobody uses the term Latinx, because I'm sure she's plugged into the Latinx community. She mentions there being a transgendered Native American, even though I looked it up and transgendered is not a race. 
But it helps make the overt bigotry more palatable to conservatives, I guess, because they tend to prefer overt transphobia and covert white supremacy. But then, shock of all shocks, there's a white man in the race. And coming in lane five, we've got a white man. Boo, boo, boo. You know, I, I keep hearing people talk about how white men are demonized, but I'm white, and I spend most of my time disguised as a man, and I gotta tell you, I don't really see it. Like the sum total of discrimination against white people I have ever felt in my life is that people will occasionally make jokes at my expense. Anyway, I don't have to deal with being over-policed, losing out on job opportunities because of my race, sexual harassment, or any real problems as a result of being white and or doodly. She can't be bothered to even mention a way in which white men are supposedly disadvantaged. She just boos when she sees one and then moves on. Like. In the skit, they hold the white guy back so that the other people can succeed, right? And they're off! Well, except the white man, he has to stay back to compensate for years of oppressing other people, as he should. Boo! White people! Boo! And examples of this being done to white people in the real world include... Nothing ever. But that, that's that gotta be the case, right? Right? That's gotta be what the wokes are advocating, because otherwise, what could they possibly mean when they say they want minorities to succeed? Because if everything was fair, you see, those people could never succeed. Obviously, the only way for them to do that is to hold back white people who would naturally win at everything if shit was fair. Otherwise, I might have to reevaluate whether or not I'm one of the best people, and I've based a lot of my personality, culture, and political beliefs around that, so. I don't even want to think about it. I love also that her example for this point is a foot race, which white people are famously the best at according to their merits. I have no idea what she's trying to make fun of in this sketch. Like, it's called race war, right? So you think it's going to be mostly a racial thing, but then halfway through the sketch she just gives up and makes it about, like, whatever's pissing her off at that second. AOC jumps into the race because the CCP arrests the Chinese guy who she earlier was angry at us for not hating, but now it's bad when something bad happens to the Chinese guy, and she's like, oh yeah, we should totally bring policies like that to America, as though anyone is arguing that we should. And he is out of the race. They're taking him to a re-education center to be tortured slowly to death. But yes, let's bring those practices to North America. Equality. It's, it's stunning to see the lack of focus on display here because she's not putting in any effort to do this skit. Like, she's not wearing a costume or editing or anything, really. She had one asset that she slaps in there because otherwise it would be completely indecipherable what is meant to be happening in this sketch. And you can do sketch comedy like that. Like, Gus Johnson is really funny and he does sketches like that all the time. But in those sketches, what he does is he makes jokes. He doesn't just state his beliefs and stand still as though that itself were a joke. That's what's truly wild to me about Nicole's comedy. She's just... She's just saying things. They're not jokes, like she clearly intends them to be jokes, but they're obviously not. Like this style of comedy is... Like imagine if I just said, well I think uh, cantaloupes taste good, but uh, you shouldn't eat the, the rind, you should only eat the inside part of the melon. Like, I'm, do you see how I'm delivering it as though it's a joke, but it's just a statement that I believe? That's all Nicole does. Sometimes she'll set up a joke, but then there'll be no punchline. Like, it's truly baffling. There's no other word for it. I have to call it what it is. It's virtue signaling. It's not like real virtue, it's just that her fucked up brain perceives it to be. All she's doing is giving her hateful weirdos a pat on the head and saying, Yes, sweetie, I believe the same things you do. You're so smart for agreeing with me. And I know this is a weird takeaway, but the thing that freaks my being the most here is that this is meant to be comedy. That she's like, she's trying to make people laugh. It, it's inscrutable to me how. Like the whole edgy racist shit stopped being shocking a long time ago. Her content is just so boring. It's so boring. I, I'm going to talk about one more video, even though my brain is producing, like, reverse dopamine at the thought of it. My whole central nervous system is screaming at me. No. No, please. No more Nicole Arbor. Please. This one's called, and God, this, ugh, I, Truth About Coronavirus. Hey. Hey, everybody. Where do you, where do you think COVID comes from? 
Some people think it came from a wet market. Some people think it escaped from a lab because they lack critical thinking faculties. Nobody really knows. I bet Nicole has some thoughts on the subject. Let's hear her talk about it. Let's hear her really informed opinion about the subject. Did it come from psychos eating bats? Did it come from some Chinese booty hole licking orgy? Or are we all just realizing now that China is filthy? Who knows? But it came from China. So getting mad that people are calling it a Chinese virus, BT dubs, CNN and MSNBC all also called it that before they decided that they were gonna decide that it's racist to say that. I can't even keep up with their shit. Yeah, but like, Nicole, like, First of all, once the virus left China, do you see how it's no longer accurate or helpful to call it the Chinese virus? Because it's everywhere now? So all calling it the Chinese virus does is encourage people to blame Chinese people for it, which is kind of a problem because once again, the huge increase in hate crimes against Asian people. Like, do you think all viruses are just named after the place where they first came up? Like, do you think there was a place somewhere called influenza? Secondly, I would argue there is a qualitative difference between the Chinese virus, a neutral descriptor used when the virus was exclusively a problem in China, and the China virus, which implies that the disease is implicitly and inexorably Chinese, which it isn't because, as I said, it's everywhere now. And it's the latter thing that conservatives insisted upon saying. Thirdly, if everyone has settled on the name COVID-19 or coronavirus, which we have as evidenced by the fact that you said coronavirus in the title of your own fucking video, both of which actually describe what the thing is, the conservatives who demand that we call it the China virus are the ones politicizing the issue. They want to use this global pandemic to vilify China, like you're doing. Like, Trump got busted literally crossing out coronavirus on his speeches and replacing it with China virus. You're the ones going out of your way to say something that isn't natural. It, it, this isn't some slip of the tongue that people jumped on your throat for. It's not incidental word choice. You're trying to insist on calling it the thing which is politically convenient for you for racist reasons, because you're a big racist. You're saying a racist thing to troll people and then acting like they're foolish for thinking you're a racist. Here's you saying that in the video. <gasps> That's racist. Is it though? Really? <laughs> to me, it seems more geographical. And if we're really going for it, it seems like you're falling for the same troll for the last five years. Fourthly, even if we granted that calling it the Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus were not racist, saying that China is filthy sure is. Then she complains that people are using the internet to complain about Donald Trump during the pandemic, while he was the sitting president of the most powerful country in the world and deliberately downplayed the severity of the pandemic and convinced his dullard fan base to like, drink bleach and that malaria medication will just magically cure them. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that, maybe that, uh, maybe that has something to do with why people complained about him because he was the single most powerful human being on, in their country and on the planet and used that power to promote fake news and pseudoscience that resulted in thousands of people dying from a disease that he as the leader of a whole country failed to address properly. Something I'm sure you can relate to because later in the video you complain about Justin Trudeau. For example, I told Justin Trudeau to stop letting planes come in from China. My solution was maybe we shouldn't let airplanes full of people from the most infected place where this whole thing started, China. Then it's all about how the media is lying to you. She, there's just so many lies going around. She doesn't give any examples of lies from the media, but they're, they're there, you know? And to the media with the novel coronavirus, maybe we'll try something novel with you, like telling the fucking truth. The amount of lies I've seen reporters post on Twitter has blown my mind. Does anybody else remember when they used to be our trusted source? And like, the media wouldn't even talk about the virus. They never even talk about it at all. You can't find info about COVID from the media ever. There's a pandemic? I better check the news to see what's going on. Donald Trump. Yeah, we get it. What about the virus? And in today's news, Donald Trump. <sighs> He's the worst. Is there anything you want to tell us, the confused and scared public, about the Wuhan Chinese virus? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, how the fuck do you even think that? That is the wildest shit I have 
ever heard. You're telling me, you unbelievable cretin, that when you look at the news, when you look at the news, they're not talking about COVID. They just don't want to talk about it. You get no COVID info or statistics. Hey, Nicole, we're both Canadian. Let's check in on some typical Canadian news sites, not just some lefty bullshit like I would like, just some normal common news sites. CBC has an entire front bar on their website that is all COVID, right at the top, all collected there for you. Global News puts its COVID tracker on its front page above the weather report, the most looked at part of the news. The Globe and Mail makes you scroll down an inch to get to its huge site-wide COVID statistics panel. Three out of five headlines on the National Post are about COVID a year and a half into the pandemic, when it's probably less of a news story than it was when you made your video. Or if you don't even want to go, go to the, those media places, you can look at where the fu fucking YouTube put a, a little thing at the bottom of your own video where you can click on it and get info about COVID because everywhere you can get info about COVID, what the fuck are you talking about? She complains more about people complaining about Trump and then ends with an impassioned plea to get people to take quarantine more seriously, which is good how only the most thoughtless pieces of shit are out there not socially distancing. They're practically killing your grandma. Hey, Nicole, do you know who's somebody who has, I don't know, let's say discouraged social distancing? Like one thing that he did was he held enormous rallies at the height of the pandemic. Because uh, it seems to me, Nicole, like if, like if you wanted to find an example of someone who is lying about the pandemic and discouraging people from doing the common sense things that, that would have made it kill less people. One example of a type of person like that, Nicole, was Trump. Nicole, why am I arguing with this fucking year old video that she shot out into the world without thinking about it? Why am I wasting my thoughts on something she didn't think about for even a fucking second? For a while, it really confused me how people thought this shit was funny, but I think I've figured it out. I've been trying to analyze Nicole's work as a comedian, but she's not a comedian. Not really. What she is, is a bully. Like, look at her. She looks like a fucking bully. Look at her. You either got bullied by a girl who looked like Nicole Arbor in school, or you were a girl who looked like Nicole Arbor in school. Nicole's targets are all people that she feels more powerful than. People who can't fight back because the world has given her an upper hand. People don't watch her videos to laugh with her. They watch her videos to laugh at others, to feel like one of the cool kids. She's picking on them. She's not picking on you. That must make you cool. I think that's what makes them so exhausting to watch. Because as an emotionally developed adult, this neither offends me nor amuses me. Like it's this pathetic floundering drama of a mean girl who never quite figured out how to become a mean woman. She knows she can upset people and that will get her attention. And that seems to have stopped her from ever having an interest in doing much of anything else, at least creatively. And what I think she's going to discover as time marches ever forward and her relevance continues to diminish as her demographic gets less and less powerful, less and less untouchable, what she might discover then is what it feels like to be bullied. I mean, she's very easy to bully. I didn't even bring up her extremely cringy parody of This Is America, because to be honest, I can't bring myself to watch more than 20 seconds of it before my body begins to fold in on itself, trying to compress me into a diamond that I might spare myself the psychic pain. It won't take a lot of work to bully her, is what I'm saying. And I think that'd look a little something like this. Nicole Arbor looks like the villain in a Disney Channel movie. She looks like Nicole Kidman had a baby with the abstract concept of privilege. She looks like the default playable character in an RPG for Nazis. She looks like a police sketch artist who was told to draw the name Becky. Hey, what's the difference between watching Nicole Arbor's videos and getting kicked in the balls? If I got kicked in the balls, it'd be funny. How is Nicole Arbor like the movie Chappie? She sucks and nobody's thought about her since 2015. How is Nicole Arbor like The Simpsons? Because both should have been canceled a long time ago. Nicole Arbor calls the police when she sees black coffee. What's the difference between Nicole Arbor and the eyeball zone? One is an evil entity that feeds on the life force of others, and the other is the eyeball zone. Hello and welcome to the eyeball zone. Here in the eyeball zone, we cram eyeballs every which way into small leftist content creators, hollowing them out and replacing what was once inside with hundreds of chittering, hungry eyeballs. 
Hey, this video showed what a big dipshit thinks about fat people, but what about, what's the real thing about fat people? What are fat people really like, and how come people think bad stuff about them? Well, in Good Fatty vs. Bad Fatty, Mainly Mandy discusses the racist history of fat shaming and how fat phobia, both internalized and external, affects the ways fat people are treated and medicalized. It's in the form of the Socratic dialogue between what fat people are supposed to be like, according to society's expectation, and like how a, like a person who uh, felt good about themselves might behave. But also they're characters from The Wizard of Oz, but not really. It's a whole thing. Go watch it. Do you, hey, you got a small leftist project you'd like to see featured in the Eyeball Zone? You know what to do. Send exactly one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with the word eyeball somewhere in the description and pertinent details like your pronouns, and perhaps you will find yourself trapped here in the Eyeball Zone. Boy, that was a lot of shit to say. What a, what a waste of my time and hopefully not yours. If you like this video, why not subscribe for more videos like it and click the like button. Uh, if you really liked the video, you can head on over to patreon.com slash thoughtslime and that's where people go to pay for this gobbledygook, this nonsense that I've made. Hey, let me ask you a question. Do you like scary movies? You know who said that? Scream from Scream. Scream said that. You, you can go, you can find out about scary movies over at Scary Cats. Oh, youtube.com slash scaredycatstv where I upload horror content every Tuesday. Also, I stream on Thursdays at 8pm Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube and Twitch, twitch.tv slash thoughtslime. That's it. That's all the words I say at the end of a video. Leave now.